Yeah, so the, the thing, the reason why I bring you up there is for a couple reasons. One, I want to show you some beautiful parts of Mount Shasta that you wouldn't see otherwise. Two, plein air painting is not always like choosing the very best scene that has a pretty tree. In fact, a lot of plein air paintings start to get pretty dull when you start thinking they're all pretty much the same kind of meadow with a tree on the left or on the right. There are some artists that I see that are teaching and, and painting that literally it's almost the same painting over and over and over again. Part of the wonders of being a plein air painter is to be completely mobile, which some of you are not. In fact, it's very, very important that you have your supplies together in such a way so that you can actually move. And, you know, one reason why we do this workshop is so that you do kind of start picking and choosing things that you need and things that you don't. And even myself, if I don't do some plein air painting over two or three months, my stuff gets scattered about. And before you know it, I forget things. And a lot of you have forgotten things. A lot of you had wished you brought certain things. The way that you keep track of that is to have a list of your own, the things that you like, you know. And just because I provide you a list doesn't mean that's it. But one thing you might want to consider that tonight when you go back to your rooms, you might want to think about consolidating a little bit. Now usually on a Sunday, usually Sunday uh, morning on my workshops, um, there's an optional walk that we go on and it's down into a canyon. And the reason why I chose that as part of my optional walk, as an optional thing, and most everybody participates in it, is that you cannot go down there with all the stuff that you guys are carrying around. And some of you are, are going out on location as if you're going into a studio or you have more stuff with you now than you even bring to class. And it makes it very, very difficult to be mobile. And all of a sudden, like today, you're out there and then it rains and you, you trip and stumble and fall and try to get all this, all this stuff. And it's great, this is an easy workshop. Most of the places that we're painting are just right outside of your, your uh, trunk. So it doesn't really require, but I would suggest if you want to become successful plein air painters, is that you may want to try to consider other options for your supplies and how you cart them around. Now, one of the things that um, a lot of you have, and we've already just you ran into some problems, are these French easel boxes. They're wonderful. In fact, there are a lot of professional artists that use them. Okay? But there's only two kinds to buy, and that's the Julian or the Maybeth. All the other ones, as we determined today, this is a brand new easel. It's a piece of garbage. Used once, how much you pay for it? $100? If you're paying less than $250 to $300, junk. Walk away from it. Well, it was, it was $165 on sale. Mm -hmm. $165 on sale? It was $165 on sale for $98. $98. Junk. I got mine for $30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bought yours used at a garage sale. No, I bought it from another painter. Well, same difference. But it's missing the foldable things, so you don't have quite the whole thing. But it's all these things. And, you know, you may want to try working with the Strata or one of our other boxes that we have. How do you like working with the... I like it, except the mixing area is small for me because I get my arm into it and I ran, ran out of clean space. If a tablet fit in there, that would work better for mm -hmm. me than I could just fold it over and keep on going. Yeah, and one of the experiments that you may want to try is try a larger box. Because they make small ones and bigger ones and bigger ones and if you run out of space. But truthfully, you have to kind of ask yourself what's, what's important. One, to be mobile and to be able to set up quickly, to be able to, to get a sketch done, do small plein air sketches, or have more space to paint, more things to carry. You know, there's always a payoff one way or the other. 
I opt that it's very much more important to be able to be light, quick, and if you have to wipe off your palette once or twice or have a palette that gets kind of loaded up with paints and stuff, that is a, a pretty good payoff compared to having a lot of stuff to carry and a, a bigger easel. Now, if, if planar painting is your life and you want to go out with one of these Maybeth um, easels, it's great. Um, Jim McVicker, he uses that almost exclusively and you know he'll go out to a location three or four times painting on one painting and he'll set up and work with it and a lot of artists work with it and there's no problem with that except if you buy a cheap one. You know, so it does cost a little bit up, at, up front. You could actually go with something this small and this is some of my best paintings have been done out of this box. And when people go, oh, it's just too much to carry, it's too much. I have literally gone on trips, the entire trip for a week, doing nothing but paintings with this box. Okay. So the painting slides in here. This is your painting here. This is your surface, your paints, your brushes. Now for some of you that were stumbling and crawling and, and trying to get your stuff all packed up and stuff, you could have just sat out there on a chair and just used this. That's how compact you could actually get your art supplies down to. So you really have to consider whether or not your supplies are hindering you from being really a powerful painter. Um, and another thing too is that you want to choose a size of canvas and then stick with it. So I wouldn't go on location anymore because I've made this mistake. I used to go out and I would have a little box, a bigger box, and a bigger box. So I'd have three and I have every box in the world that's out there. Then I would have 8 by 10s, 9 by 12s, 12 by 16s, 24 by 36, because I just don't know what I'm going to paint. So I want to be prepared. Big mistake. Best thing you can do is say I'm going to be a 9 by 12 painter. I'm only going to paint 9 by 12 canvases or 8 by 10 or 5 by 7. And then buy everything according to that. So one of the things that most of you should be considering getting is a drying box, which is a box that looks like this. This is for 12 by 16 and these are boxes that you put your canvas in and this is if you decide you're going to be a 12 by 16 painter, you'd have a box like this in your car. Um, Raymar makes these. This is Raymar. These are lightweight. Two, two different sizes. Yeah, they're two different sizes but I'd recommend sticking with one. It's tempting. Now you could do two. It's just more hassle. And what is that? This is a Raymar and it's lightweight, Raymar and it's lightweight, you can carry it and even just to get, who was it that I had to help, I think it was you I had to carry, you had a very very wet painting, it was raining and so you, the good thing I came by because if you had all that stuff and your wet painting you would have been screwed in, that, in the ring. So it's good to have a box like that. So it's really, you've got to kind of consider. Excuse me, what about the little boxes like the Nicole has those little carpet boxes? Nicole always gets the cheapest option. Nicole always gets the cheapest. This is Handy Porter. This is by Gorilla. The, it, does, it doesn't quite have the same slots. These are actually more for um, canvas as opposed to canvas boards. Well, I this is. You can put four in here. Yeah. yeah, and there's nothing wrong. Some of the artists use pizza boxes. And pizza boxes are really cool too, but have something with it. The Raymar has a strap, and I guess you could put a strap on this. And you could also make your own stuff. I mean, some artists make their own stuff. Stephen, yeah. The Raymars also you can get an insert that would go in here to do like an eight by ten. I think it changes it to tens. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary. No, I know. I yeah. didn't buy it, but I'm just saying for somebody who's. And Raymar also makes canvas. smaller make smaller boxes. They make small ones bigger, bigger, bigger and wider. If you're going to Europe, like one of my students went to Europe, she got the 5x7 Raymar 
that she needed, she was going to do 20 or 30 paintings, so she needed the wide one so she could get all her paintings back. And of course, when you go fly, you could put all of your paintings in there and then ship them in your luggage. So it's really good to have your supplies. It doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune. It just means you have to kind of think about that. My favorite box to use of all times, out of all the stuff, are the old-fashioned um, Peshad boxes. This is exactly the same box that Albert Bierstadt came out and painted all of America. And you'll see that if you look at Albert Bierstadt's paintings in the museums, you will see that they're all the same size. All of his sketches are the same size. And I think they're like 18 by 22 or whatever, but they're exactly the same size as his paint box. And he basically, this is all he had, <coughs> was he had his handy dandy little tripod chair that he would set down. And they've got photos of him sitting with Indians out in Yosemite. And he'd have his little box, which he opened up, like that. There's a little latch that holds the painting up. So, this holds three canvases in here, so if you're worried about um, having a drying box. This actually works as a drying box. Holds three canvases up here. Then you have your uh, palette here and then your paints down in here. Um, and all you need to do is just put this thing on your lap like so. Get your paints out here and you're in business. You're painting away. So all of this other stuff becomes cumbersome. Now they don't make really good boxes like this anymore um, for sale, but you can buy them on eBay, old vintage ones. This one's from about 1922 and was given to me by an old artist that passed away. Um, another thing that you might want to consider, because we're kind of dealing with this issue right now, is that this is an electrician's bag. It's stiff, there's no lid on it, and it holds things very well. The great thing about this, you will hold your brushes or you can stick your brushes alongside. One important thing is your turpentine. These little jars that you get from MSR, um, you get these at uh, high-end camping stores. These are actually um, designed to hold white gas. They're perfect for turpentine. They're aluminum, they're lightweight, and they won't smash or bash or leak. They're completely um, made so that you don't have a problem leaking. You can hang them on a clip. They come in small, bigger, bigger. They're a wonderful um, uh, addition to your painting supply box. Absolutely a must for your turpentine. Palette knives. Very, very crucial to have palette knives, but one of the problems that you have when you paint outdoors is that oftentimes your palette knives will break, especially when you have high-end palette knives. So I make sure I hold my palette knives in a box like this. And the high-end palette knives, uh, Holbein palette knives that could run you about $50 a piece, they actually come with this little velvet holder that's in a plastic box. And what I do is I just take that out of there and I glue it into here. The knives are nice and sturdy, the tips are safe because that's what you have to watch out with palette knives is that they oftentimes will bend inside. And then you just close the box up so that they're sealed up. And so this is an important thing to have, but you should be able to carry everything on one trip. Now the reason why we would have this little hike on Sunday mornings is that it's about a half a mile hike down into the canyon to paint an incredible waterfall. And I would tell everybody all weekend, we are going to do this hike. Consolidate, find out what's important, cut down your supplies, take the minimum, figure out what you need. And ultimately, Sunday morning would come, everybody would make it down there, and guess who got to carry everything back out? I'd come out like a Sherpa. 
I can't carry this box back up, okay. What about my box? I can't, okay. <laughs> and I'd come back, you know, everybody's already on top of the hill and here's me carrying, because everybody has too much supplies. Um, one beautiful thing about plein air painting is that you want to be able to just dart off into the woods and be able to do something. So having your supplies handy is really, really important. So I highly recommend that you get that in order. Um, if there's any question about some of the supplies that are out there, we have some supplies listed on uh, my website, stephanbauman.com. And if you go under shop, there's actually some links for companies that sell these if you want to know. The most important thing that you have to have for painting outdoors is not your box at all. And I didn't see any of them come out today. But you need to have a painting umbrella. Today, your life would have been a lot better, your paintings would have turned out better if you would have had an umbrella. They're so important that even I had mentioned once on my workshop, I said, you need to have really good umbrellas. Unfortunately, there are not very many companies that produce umbrellas for artists. And one of my artists at that workshop went back home and started her own umbrella company for artists called The Best Umbrella. And do I have one here? Oh, may have, but oh, these are easy L's. Easy L's are great too. They're listed on our website. Um, but these umbrellas, they're not for you. They're for your painting. Um, you, if you need to worry about the sun, then wear a hat. But you mainly attach these onto your easel. Um, you put this up, and they're supposed to protect your painting. If you are painting outdoors, the light is very, very bright and it's hard to actually see the colors. It is always better like this afternoon to paint in that overcast that we had, but this morning a lot of the paintings when you brought them into the studio appeared a lot darker than the paint when you were painting out there and it's because there was too much light hitting your canvas. So it's very, very important to make sure that you have your canvas covered at all times. And there are all kinds of umbrellas at the market. Easy Yellow has an awesome one. We have a link on our website for that. And also Best Umbrella. Do we have a link on that for that too? It's also really a good umbrella. Um, yes? Is that inside is green? Inside is black. black. Yeah. Like um, is it Peggy that's from Easy Yellow? Peggy, who's, she's awesome. The outside is the outside is silver. Yeah. And if you guys want to borrow one of these to see what it's like to paint underneath them, um, the great thing is that they're vented. Yeah. We'll show the, see the easy help, but they're vented so that the wind will actually go through and they're black underneath so that there's no reflection on your canvas. And they're silver on top and you'll stay cool underneath. This would, this would attach to your easel. So your tripod on your easel, you know, on the tripod? Yeah, so this expands quite a ways. I feel like Mary Poppins. So this expands here, here. And so this would attach to your, your easel leg. And you can see it's quite high. And then, in this package, here it is, there's a string. <clears throat> that string gets attached to here and here. If you notice, this is removable. One, it's removable or flexible so that when the wind blows, it doesn't take the, the box down. Two, it's also made so that when you really get the wind, it does detach and fly off and not take your easel down. So this will actually fly down on the ground before you have a disaster. So that's why it's designed to have the string. You put the string on so it's tight enough to keep it in there, but it's designed so that the, the umbrella doesn't take off and run away from you and not knock off all, all of your supplies. So it's, these um, supplies are designed 
for painters and they're awesome to have and they're crucial to have. Um, the best umbrella is, a lot of it is the attachment on what you'd like to have it, how it attaches to your easel. Some of them have a nice big um, uh, clamp at the bottom. Um, the other ones, they're, they're relatively, they're all vented, they're all, it's just different options. You'll have to go on to the... I'm asking because I really hesitate because of my experience with a uh, French easel of buying something that I haven't really seen. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the problems that you have when you're buying something out of a catalog. And that's why at the workshop we have these different easels like the Strata easel. If you wanted to take that for a test drive, you're welcome to, to play with that. Right now you're using the Sienna easel. And you can see there's some of these are pretty good quality. One of the things that we do in the, in the workshop and on the website is that we offer our opinion of what's good. And if I tell you the best umbrella or the Easy L umbrella are good umbrellas, you can almost bet that no, that's I what you want to do. That's, I just yeah. A lot of a lot of the high end. There are a lot of people that are doing these in the garage. There are a lot of companies that are that are not big companies that are making shot boxes, and there's a lot of confusion. You could buy the open box M, and we've talked about that. I think it's overpriced and overrated. Um, the Strata easel, which is now in the market, is a relatively good easel. They're trying to um, compete with the Open Box M, which is the Cadillac. And I like it, but it's a very heavy easel. You know, and I think the smaller one is better than the bigger one, um, just because of practicality. I want to be able to, to, to run. My thing is, if I'm going to go and do any plain air painting, if I were, if I were, uh, going out to paint or doing a workshop like this, I would have to get all my supplies in this and maybe carry one thing, okay? That's really how it should be a backpack of some kind and you should be very, very mobile. Um, so if I could cram my umbrella in there, the Strata also has a wonderful tripod that makes it very, very small that I could actually put into that. And that's something I would consider. What is that tripod? The Strata, the Strata tripod, which is a very high-end um, tripod, and this is a S-I-R-U-I. So, uh, do you supplies go in that little box then, or? Well, this is, this is, you know, how small this tripod falls, and most tripods are that long. And so this collapses even smaller than most tripods do. So it's a really good one on the market. And this one's produced by a company by S-I-R-U-I. And I don't know if they produce them as for photographers, probably so. The but Strata... Do they attach it to like a bigger box? Or? Well, they attach to this. This is your painting surface. So here's your easel. I, I think our question is, can it attach to any brand? Box? Yes. Yeah, as long as you're buying the, all of the... All of the easels that are on the market have the same quick release. And so you can move the, from box to box to tripod to tripod using the quick release. And every one of these tripods has a little different quick release, but they're all designed to fit on a tripod. Okay. Well, Usually they're something you bought separate. Yeah, and the quick release is nothing more. I rarely use a quick release. I usually just screw my, my box right into my tripod, just like I do my camera. But quick release, all what that does is allow you to flip a button and take this off. So you can separate this and put it into your, your backpack and then slide this in your backpack so you're not carrying very much. When would you use a French easel versus something like this, I guess? That's you would choose. Which do you prefer? I prefer this. I prefer something that I can put. The French easels are very heavy, very cumbersome, as you found out, to put away. Um, they're great if you're working out of a car. Um, but if you have to go hiking, now in my television show, you see me walking around and painting with a French easel. You ever watch my TV show? <sighs> they're up on YouTube now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so in my... 
on my television show, you see me walking around with a French easel. And that French easel that I'm walking around, I actually took my accordion straps, because I used to play the accordion. I still do, uh, at restaurants. And so I took the, my accordion straps off, and I used it to put that, um, the, one of these easels on my back, okay? So I look very painterly, okay? But the problem with that, it's still very heavy. You know, in some of our walks, we walk 26 miles to, to one of the lakes at Kings Canyon National Park. Oh my God, that would have killed me. So the box that you see me carrying around is completely empty. That's stripped down, it's just a prop. And so it weighs probably two pounds. And then I had a, um, on that particular uh, shoot, uh, I had a horse, you know, one of those Pac-Men, pack my art stuff back there because I wasn't going to carry 20 pounds of paint to go back there to do the television show. But most of the television show, I do use a French easel because it's very good for a stationary thing. And most of the television show, I was painting fairly close to the road because with our camera and all the stuff that we did, we had to be close. But is it practical to go out into the wilderness with one of those? Probably not. And some of you have had that experience this last couple of days with trying to get that thing set up and put away. Not only that, it takes up a lot of space in the back of your car. So, you know, would this take up less space? Probably so. When you have this, is it much more expensive? No, it's well, not. Why not. Why doesn't everybody get this? I guess I because they're not watching my YouTube videos and buying what I suggest. <laughs> if you, are you telling us that if we purchase something, we should get a tripod instead? I'm saying that most artists that are plain air painters use tripod easels. But you could go down to this if you wanted to. And then you just throw this over your shoulder and it's like, hey, I'm painting. You know, you could go down to something this easy. It doesn't have to be a big, unpractical thing. And think about so far the experiences that you've had painting out here. Just the two paintings you've done so far. What has been the biggest oh, setting, up and setting up and putting away? Wouldn't you agree? I mean, if somebody would set it up for you, the painting part of it is actually kind of pleasant and wonderful, but that setting up and taking down is, ugh. Unless you have to have a tripod or a chair with, where you have a lap or something, or a table. Hmm? You can't just stand and hold this thing. You've got you to sit on a rock. Yeah, yeah. You sit on a rock or you take a, tr a three yeah, three-legged stool and you put this in front of you. I mean, you can get it a lot simpler than those French easels. Those French easels are kind of a pain in the neck. And, and the boxes do vary in prices. I mean, the sienna that she's been using is between uh, 90 and 110. Yeah. For a, a regular box, maybe a little bit more. These stratas are 235. Yeah. So and so, that, because they're metal and they're not going to break down like the sienas. But you know, I have used wood easels. The Maybeth one that I used for the television shows, I had used that one that we actually used for painting. I had that ever since I was 16 years old. And it had been to all the parks, all, never had a problem. The painting, the one that I'm using for a prop is one of those pieces of whatever you bought, okay? that somebody gave me because it fell apart on them outdoors. My Maybeth easels, I had gone all over the place, but they're $300. You plan on paying $300. You could buy the Sienna easel, which is what you were borrowing, and how did you like that? I like it. It's, it's a nice little... Except it's kind of small for me. To yeah, but, you, you, but it's but easy to... get around it. I think I'd probably take a um, gray pad and paper cutter and just cut it down to fit in yeah, there all the time. Yeah, and then just tear it off and if you need more just, spots. Yes, and, or fold it and still be able to use my paints. And exactly. It still, yeah, you can work around that. I would find, but my question on each of those is, you quoted prices and you quoted a price. That's without the tripod. The right? tripod is separate. Okay. What, and the this, tripods vary between a hundred, like PCLs around um, 120, 130. Mm -hmm. What about the one, the small one you were 
This is the one that I recommend. What are they charging for that? Yeah, they're 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 getting into some money too. I mean, it's it's there's nothing cheap about painting outdoors, you know. Yeah, it's nothing cheap about playing golf. There's nothing cheap about going out and and doing a weekend in Napa, you know. There's nothing cheap about going to Starbucks every morning. At the end of the year, you spend fifteen hundred dollars. You know, life is expensive. So if you're going to do this, you talk to a golfer. You're a golfer. How much is a golf club? Ridiculous. <laughs> How much is a golf club? Fifteen. Golf club? One club. One club, maybe about three hundred. Three hundred dollars. How many golf clubs do you have in your box? Fourteen. Fourteen golf clubs. <laughs> How much was the bag? <clears throat> maybe two hundred. How much is, does it cost you to play a game? Hundred dollars. How much does it cost you to join a club? Okay, so 15,000. So all of a sudden paints are, and art supplies are really, really cheap compared to what other people do. Ask a hang glider what they pay for their things. Ask people who climb rocks how much their ropes are and their, their, their things that they leave in the mountain because they can't get back and get them again. I mean, all, anything you do in life is expensive. I can't yeah. preach it. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it. But at the end of the day, what do you have to share? Yeah, but at the end of the day, what you're healthier, you're healthier, and plus also, what do replacement knees cost you when you get older? <laughs> a lot of people get that because they don't exercise. That's true, but I know a lot of runners that have got replacement knees because they. But anyway, it just depends on what you want to do. So we will go through we will go through the painting uh, thing, but I would say that's probably one of the biggest hurdles that I saw today was uh, how difficult it was to set up. And it's something you want to consider. And I want you to love plain air painting. And part of plain air painting is making the investment to get the supplies and making it so that it's so easy for you, that you just, you look forward to going. You know, the, a nice box like I showed you here, you can leave in the back of your car. And then when you go hiking, you go, I'm gonna take my paint box with me. And who knows, while I'm hiking, I might do some painting. Or while you're golfing. You know, pull this out. <laughs> the, who knows? Golfers buy paintings of golf courses. Go for it. Okay.